And we're back now with our panel. I want to go back to uh, Ted Olson because uh, Mark McKinnon uh, brought out something. He, uh, you have talked, uh, Mr. Olson, about there may be kind of a libertarian strain running through part of the Republican Party that is talking about less government in people's lives and that this might be uh, one place where we might see a change there. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Well, I think that marriage is a conservative value. Equality is a conservative value. I'm not saying that those aren't liberal values either, but the Republican Party is the, pres is the party of Abraham Lincoln. Equality and independence and people that love one another, that wish to form a stable bond, a part of our economy, a part of our community, that should be a conservative value. Forty-five years ago, the Supreme Court held unanimously that 14 states that prohibited interracial marriage were violating the Constitution. In those states, our president today, his mother and father, could not have been married without committing a felony. Today, we can't believe that in America, interracial couples were not permitted to be married just 45 years ago in many states of the United States. We're, I'm hoping that we're coming to the point when we can give the same respect and decency to individuals who wish to marry someone of the same sex. And as the Prime Minister of Great Britain said, I'm not for gay marriage despite the fact I'm a conservative. I'm for gay marriage because I'm a conservative. Well, let me go to Tony Perkins then. Uh, how do you respond to that? Do you ever see evangelicals coming around to the point of view of Ted Olson? No, I mean, I think, look, when you look at interracial marriage, that was wrong. There was no reason to be opposed to that because you had two people who met the definition of marriage between a man and a woman. And, 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 and that's, in, that's consistent with natural law, which our civil rights are based on. When you look at same-sex marriage, that's counter to natural law. And again, we see what comes along, and this is not theoretical, we've actually seen it, where parents lose the right to determine what their children are taught in school, uh, religious organizations forced to recognize or allow their facilities to be used for weddings such as this. So I, I, don't, I don't see that happening. I see this more along the lines of the abortion debate. This, you can, you can make it legal, but you can't make it right. And I do not think that you're going to see uh, the Republican Party coming to agreement on this. I do think there's this libertarian viewpoint. But less, the key to less government is to ensure that kids have moms and dads, not, not just two caregivers, because if it were two, three would be better. It's moms and dads. That's what. Well, let, let me talk to, uh, to Clay about this, because he had a big decision to make. And, and after you uh, had your, your first child, you decided that, you needed to come out. And I would just like to ask you, uh, what kind of an impact did that have on your, uh, on your professional career? Because I know the base of country music, which is something I know a little bit about, is, is uh, fairly conservative. I think, I think today it's even less conservative in Nashville, in the, in the country music world, than it, is, than it was in 2003 when I was on Idol. Um, it hasn't really had much of an impact at all in a negative sense. It's had more of a positive impact. I think, I think between the time of 2003 to today, uh, uh, we've seen, as we've seen with gay marriage uh, polling, we've seen minds changing. We've seen people becoming more open and understanding of, uh, of, of homosexuality. I want to address the fact that, you know, what, what you just said a second ago. When my mother married my stepfather, she went to a church, a Baptist church, and since she had been divorced, they wouldn't let her get married there. Um, so churches don't are able to decide who gets married at a church and regardless um, obviously you've got you've got people who make the argument that interracial relationships back in the 70s people made the same arguments against interracial relationships as they're making against same-sex marriages today um, so I feel I really strongly believe that in the next 20 years we're gonna look back on this and be sort of ashamed of the fact that we were against this just as we are ashamed today that we didn't let people of, of different races get married where do you see this going Mark uh, well, the arc of history is bending forward, and, and it's not going backwards. And, and I respect Tony's position. I have a lot of friends like Tony who say that they take literally words that were written in Scripture 2,000 years ago. But I, like Ted, take words that were written 200 years ago in the Declaration of Independence that guaranteed the pursuit of happiness literally as well. Are you going to uh, take part in this campaign, Tony? Which campaign is that? Well, the presidential <laughs> campaign. <laughs> well, we will be, uh, what I have heard since the, the president's uh, announcement on Wednesday are from, uh, from pastors across the nation, African-American pastors, white pastors, who were sitting on the sidelines because they weren't sure about Mitt Romney. I think that uh, Barack Obama has helped 
uh, fit that missing piece of intensity that Mitt Romney is going to need. I, I don't endorse candidates, won't be endorsing a candidate, but certainly will be working f to advance those issues that uh, families across this country care about. Uh, uh, Ted Olson, uh, are you going to take part in this campaign? Because I know sometimes you, you're, you're active and sometimes you're not. Uh, has anybody from the uh, Romney campaign uh, asked you to help out? No, they haven't so far. Um, and Bob, maybe it'll be necessary for me to participate in the campaign if we have a real close election like we had in 2000. Um, and I can be, my skills as a lawyer can be brought to play. But I'll, otherwise, I'll wait and see if anyone asks. And of course, what you're talking about is you argued in the Bush v. Gore, you argued for the president. And uh, David Boyes, who joined you in this uh, argument against the uh, uh, ban on uh, gay marriage in uh, California joined you in that in the in that in that uh, election uh, controversy. Of course, he was on on the opposite side. Uh, Clay, where do you go from here? Uh, are you going to be out campaigning? Are you going to vote for President Obama this time? I voted for President Obama last time. I'm sure. I'm just as I think. I think. All gay men and women are probably more energized to vote for President Obama now, um, and uh, and so I'll definitely be I'll definitely be helping how I can. And do you think people on the other side, uh, Tony Perkins, are also energized by this? Well, I, I think it does draw a very clear line of distinction on a very important issue. Again, this is uh, the reason I think we see the abortion issue and this issue as, as strong parallels is because of the the fact that it runs counter to nature, to natural law, which is what our our, our, our rights are bound uh, found in in the, in the Declaration of Independence. So based on that natural law, the reason will get us there. Re people have a hard time finding a reasonable approach to same-sex marriage. All right. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining us this morning.